All right, the subject for today's video is going to be the subject of circles. Now, most people know what a circular object is. Um, I'm going to give a quick plug to my old alma mater, Albion College, Go Britons, as we introduce the concept of a circle. Now, ooh, that turned out pretty well. Now, when it comes to circles, circles are really easy to identify because they are things that are what we would probably consider perfectly round. So the definition according to math is that a circle is the set of all points in a plane that are equidistant. That means the same distance from a given point. Now, both that distance that we're referring to with the equidistant and the point have special names. That distance is referred to as the radius, and the point is referring to the center. Now, center of a circle would be the point that is right here in the middle. The center of a circle is not technically a point that is on the circle itself. However, because it is significant, we do tend to give it a special name. We'll use H and K for that ordered pair, assuming that it's in the Cartesian plane. Then, if we were to create a little line segment joining this center out to the edge of the circle, we'll just refer to that out there as the ordered pair XY, where any of these points on the circle could be the ordered pair XY. Then that distance, we're going to refer to that as R. So the idea is that there is a heavy correspondence between right triangles and circles, as we're going to see throughout the course of the semester. Now what I'm going to do is essentially do the same sort of thing that we would do for the slope of a line and break it down into a horizontal movement and a vertical movement, typically referred to as the run and the rise. Now regardless of where I create this ordered pair xy, this distance r is never going to change. So what I'm going to do is apply the Pythagorean theorem. So according to the Pythagorean theorem, if I were to take this run squared plus this rise squared, I would get the hypotenuse squared. So the run is more frequently known as a change in x, so we'll call that x minus h. The rise is a change in y, so we'll call that y minus k. And that'll be equal to the hypotenuse squared, which is r squared. What you're looking at here is referred to as the standard form of a circle. Standard form of a circle gives us the most information. Whatever number is being subtracted from x, that would be the x-coordinate of the center. And whatever coordinate is subtracted from y, that would be the y-coordinate of the circle. So for an example of a circle that is in standard form, we could do something like x minus 4, quantity squared, plus y plus 1, quantity squared, is equal to 25. Now, to obtain the center and the radius from this thing, you're posing the question, what number is being subtracted from each of the variables? Now, the number being subtracted from x in x minus 4 would be positive 4. But if I say y plus 1, that would technically be y minus negative 1. So basically, whatever number you see inside the parentheses, you're doing the opposite of that. If I see minus 4, it's actually positive 4. If I see plus 1, it's actually negative 1. Additionally, the radius is going to be the square root of whatever you see here. So this number is supposed to be r squared. And because we've defined the radius to be a uh, distance, we don't need to worry about a plus or minus when we take the square root of 25. We can just say positive 5. Again distance, so it can be positive, but not negative. 